Hello, this is Julie at Love's Beginning. My computer's being a little bit crazy this morning, so if you see me clicking around here, it's because I'm trying to see what I'm doing. Um, I'm back here at the grocery store cafe, um, probably being encouraged to transcend some of the boundaries and fears we have about showing up in public, and it's just where I happen to be, and I knew I was going to make a video today, so here I am again. Uh, I hope the sound is okay for you. Um, first of all, a funny metaphor with the shirt this morning. I was talking about how yesterday this must be my video shirt because I realized as I look back at the past several videos, it was always this shirt. So I go to the dryer this morning because, of course, you know, everything I have is in the laundry. And I pick out the first shirt and it's this shirt. And I um, immediately put it back because just know you don't wear the same shirt two days in a row um but then a little voice came to me and said well why would you do that and and i had to look at why would i be so afraid to wear the same shirt the second day in a row um and it would be fear rejection um being judged being thought of as dirty being thought of as who knows what but there's a concern that sense of somebody's going to think something of me and they're saying it's time to lay all the ghosts to rest. You don't want to be relating to egos. You don't want to be obeying the egoic voice that is representing itself as you. So go ahead and wear the shirt. It, wear the same shirt three days in a row, four days in a row. I doubt I'll do that. <laughs> Today, this is just a testament to it's, it's really okay. <laughs> and um, when we can fast from our habits and from our judgments and from our fears, um, then that is always a good thing. So the message I got today was a metaphor along the lines of superheroes and crime fighting. Um, the fighting is tongue in cheek, but just the idea of rising up to meet what presents itself to us within the illusion and, and how we do that. So um, I have some notes here I'm consulting. Um, because when I originally got the message, I wrote down several statements, but I think I got it. Um, so the idea is that everybody, every body, every being represented, embodied by a body here within the illusion is a superhero. If we can think of them that way, then we will be empowering them. And when we're empowering them, we're empowering ourselves. If you're thinking somebody you don't want to empower, maybe you're thinking of a villain on a small scale or a large scale, what you want to power, empower is their true self. And the superhero ability is that your mind is always touching their mind, no matter what else is happening within the illusion. All minds are always touching. So your mind is always touching their mind. And what they are in your perception affects how you experience and how everybody around you experiences this illusion, what quality it takes on, how it transforms, how you allow it to transform. Are you going to allow it to transform into a lovely, friendly, supportive, thriving, healthy place to be? Or are you going to hold it in some pattern of fear and judgment and pain and suffering. It truly is up to all of us collectively and our energetic power is very, very great. That is not to say that if you feel attracted to what would be called reforms or good works in the physical, that you should not go there. We are here to connect with everyone around us and to, to transform everything around us. And that includes physical action and that includes works. So whatever, if you are um, attracted to good good works or reforms, just know that they are not in opposition to anything. It's simply a way of appreciating, being in joy, connecting, expanding, and that, that's what it truly is. So we're always connected mind to mind, and we're either pushing those minds or pulling those minds. So when we're, when we're pushing those minds, we're asserting our own egoic self. And we're believing in and inviting into experience the egoic self of all others. So when we're pushing those minds, we're in fear and we're in judgment. We're deciding who is right and who is wrong. Um, and this is a power and a choice we have in every single moment. So do we want to empower our fellows, our sisters and brothers, or do we want to disempower them to 
bring them, to invite them, we all have thoughts running through our minds, right? And the thoughts that run through our minds, um, we're not victim to the energetic patterns of other people. But if we're cho choosing egoic energetic patterns, then the egoic energetic patterns of the people around us and people thinking of us, like physically or just thinking of us, physically near us or thinking of us, are going to influence what enters our thought space. Um, our thought space, so we hear these thoughts during the day. Everybody hears voices. You don't just look at one labeled as schizophrenic and say that one hears voices. Every body, every human body hears in the inner ear voices. Those are thoughts. And if you stop to think about the quality of them, their trustworthiness and where they're coming from, it is, it is fascinating. So on the egoic level, um, if you're relating to the thoughts of other egos, you're, that's where those disturbing, um, self-limiting, critical thoughts come from. We're kind of all sharing them with each other in this big pond of, of ego. Um, but there is another option. And the other option is what is the only thing that is real, and it's love. It's very simple. <laughs> There's no fear, pain, and judgment there. And the more you grow to rely upon this as your source of inspiration, your source of movement in the world, your source of speech in the world, your source of action in the world, the more comfortable and happy and, and appreciative you are. And the more you can see in your fellows, and I've been asked to say this word fellows a lot lately. That's interesting and new because I don't remember reading it anywhere, but um, I keep being asked to say fellows instead of brothers and sisters, um, maybe because it's one word. <laughs> um, so the more we can invite that out of them, that is their true self. That is the true self of everybody. I don't care how, how big the crime or how heinous the villain, you are either inviting their true self into expression and their true self is always love with your thoughts, with your perspective, with your actions, with your words, or you're pushing them further into their attachment to the illusion. Every time you push somebody else further into their attachment to the illusion with thoughts, you are also pushing yourself further into your own attachment to the illusion. And when I'm speaking of this, I'm talking about your attachment to fear and your attachment to pain and your attachment to suffering. And we project that out into the world and create our experience in the world um, when we're attached to fear, pain, and suffering. And I, I am to some degree. You know, if you experience any tension or conflict during your day, you are. You're attached to fear, pain, and suffering. You're projecting it out into the world as, exp as experience, but we don't need to panic <laughs> because um, we are the help we need. We are love, that's who we are. And we're able to wake up and see that as the true identity of everybody around us. And we're able to realize that not only in this dimension, but in many, many, many dimensions, and there are many levels of physical and non-physical being who are assisting us, assisting us telepathically, um, assisting us by being, well, they're everywhere. Like, it's not like I have beings that are physically specifically right next to me, although I do have specific beings who help me, but they're, they have the capability of everywhere. And so do you. If you are judging a villain somewhere, somebody you're labeling villain, you're everywhere too. You just push that mind further into the illusion. That is not wrongdoing. That is not wrongdoing. Wrongdoing is not possible. Wrongdoing is a creation of the illusion. Okay, it's just confusion. It's confusion. If you want out of the illusion, if you want out of the fear, suffering, and pain, then you awaken to what your mind's doing and you realize, oh, I'm pushing myself and everybody further into fear, pain, and suffering. But when I realize, I allow, I feel the love that I am, the love that they truly are. I allow their true self to arise within them. And if we all knew we had this very simple power just sitting on our butts right here, everybody knew that. And the next villainous act occurred wherever. Um, and we all knew this about the villain. We could collectively pull that mind into healing and love and forgiveness very, very quickly. 
And there would be no need for punishment because there would simply be remembrance and deep, deep forgiveness and appreciation because every event that occurs within this illusion can be turned to the service of healing and awakening. And even if something quote unquote bad happened to you, you realize this woke me up. This helped me realize what I am, helped me dig deep into my feelings and face my fear, pain and suffering and my attachment to it and my projection of it. So thank you for it. And so there is truly nothing, nothing to fear. This seems real and we take it for real while ignoring the real that we are and that everybody else is. So if we just keep the real that we are and everybody else is in mind all of the time, we develop those new habits instead of habits of fear and wearing the same shirt two days in a row, <laughs> then we simply allow the love that we are expression into the world through each one of us. And we're, we have the energetic power to invite it to be expressed through our fellows, through our sisters and brothers out into the world too, because we're not holding them back or pushing them back in any way by categorizing them, judging them, um, being jealous of them, all those contracted feelings and emotions. And if you're acti actively engaged in any of these, like jealousy comes up for me, um, you are forgiven. You're here to simply unwind those habits. That's all. And, and there's nothing to be guilty about, nothing to contract over, just to appreciate, oh, I'm here to let this go and I get to let this go and it never felt good. And now, now we're in the process. Let's see if I missed anything here. Um, okay. You are the rehabilitation. You are the help. You know, if you perceive that anybody in your world needs punishment or rehabilitation, that's what you are. It starts with your perspective, not fearing them, not being angry with them. If you're fearing them and you're being angry with them, you're actually on the deepest level fearing the power that you are because the power that you are is profoundly healing and is very easy to allow into the illusion to this world. And um, the anger is rooted in a sense of helplessness and, and lack of power. But if you're willing to acknowledge that you and all others are love, love is present in every cell, and joy is present in every molecule, and it simply requires the invitation and the allowing to bring it into your experience, then you're staying on the empowered side of things. And you are able to heal that tendency toward anger that tendency toward anger comes out of a sense of powerlessness and fear. It doesn't come from any, um, any might or, or power. And the last note I made was this is a guide to parenting because I'm a parent. And of course, um, if your creator wouldn't punish you, there is no punishment. Punishment belongs to the illusion. Why would you punish your children? And um, this, this has been my parenting style. It's never felt right for me to punish, but it has felt right for me to kind of get in there and figure out what's going on and, and try to balance it out. So my last statement was just to say, um, <laughs> it's a guide to parenting. We're all parenting each other. We're all in brotherhood or sisterhood with each other. And we do this through our thoughts. So we're always either inviting the love that we're into expression or pushing each other away through judgments and um, categories, criticisms, decisions about deficiencies. And that is always, always optional. And when we set that option down and we make another choice, then we're happier, we feel better, and it becomes very simple. Um, that's it. Thanks.